Okay, some of these we're going to do without our calculator, and some of them we're going to do with our calculator. Uh, the first two we're going to try the best we can to do without our calculator. There might be some big numbers here. And then the last one we're going to have to use our calculator. But if you don't have a calculator, if you're doing this non-calculator, the best way to compare radicals is to first change the mixed ones to entire radicals. Because if you do that, it's going to be easier to compare. Right now, is 5 root 2's bigger or smaller than 2 root 5's? I can't picture that too easily. Yes, Andrew? Not necessarily. Because, well, and, and we'll see. So you would say that the 2 root 5 should be the smallest, and then, and then 4 root 3's, and then 5 root 2's. Or greatest to least, or vice versa, right? So we're, we're going to check to see that may be the case, but it's not always the case. So 5 root 2, well, I can write 5 as a square root. Square root of what is equal to 5? 25. And then with multiplying, square root of 25 times square root of 20, now I can multiply them. I couldn't multiply them before because they're not both square roots. But now that they're both square roots, I know that that's the square root of 50. And if you had to do an estimate, what square roots do you know that are close to 50? 7, right? Because, I mean, square root of 49 is 7, so square root of 50 should be 7 in a little bit. Probably couldn't see that it's 7 in a little bit here. And no, you can't add them. That's just coincidence. Now, the second one we had was 2 root 5's. And another way of writing 2 is square root of 4. And now we can multiply them. So we get square root of 20. And finally, we have 4 root 3's. Square root of 16. times square root of 9, or sorry, square root of 3, and this will be square root of 48. So it appears we've got 5 root 2 as the biggest one, then 4 root 3 as the next one, and 2 root 5 as the last one. And what Andrew said happens to be correct in this case. It went 5, 4, 2. But I don't want you to do that all the time because I could add one in here. Let me just do um, 3 root 6. And I'll just add that one in here because according to the pattern we were noticing, that 3 root 6 we might think would fall between the 4 and the 2. Uh, the square root of, of what is equal to 3, I'd put a 9 there. And 9 times 6 is? 54. This one would actually be the biggest. So we can't just look at the number out in front to determine which one's bigger and which one's small. So there's part A and how we do it without our calculator. Part B without our calculator. 9 cube root of 2. We would go about it the same way. <laughs> All right. What number would go in there that if you're cube rooting it? 729. This is why I say this one's kind of not the best without a calculator. Because 9 times 9 is not bad. That's 81. But 9 times 9 times 9, yeah, that might be a little bit beyond your times table. Maybe not. And then you have to double that. So this is equal to the cube root, and you have to write those threes every time, of 1,458. There's our first one. Oh my goodness, we got 11 next. 11 cube root 
of two. Does anyone know their 11 powers? One, two, three, one. One, three, three, one. All right. And if you double that, you'll get cube root of two, six, six, two. I'll show you something cool about powers of 11 right after we're done this example. And eight cube root of two. Oh. <laughs> now that I see these are all cubes root of two, I see a shortcut. <laughs> Should have looked at the whole question first. Oh, well, this has been fun, multiplying eight times eight times eight. Eight times eight times eight, someone said 512. And then cube root of two. And in this case, oh, I wish I would have looked more closely at the question to begin with. We've got 1,024. And sure enough, if we are doing the greatest to the least, 11 cube root of 2 is bigger than 9 cube roots of 2, which is bigger than 8 cube roots of 2, which once we say that, we go, well, that's kind of obvious because we're dealing with the same thing. Cube roots of 2 every time. If they were different numbers, we would have had to do this extra work to begin with. But since they're the same numbers, this is like saying 11x, 9x, and 8x. Well, of course, 11x is bigger than 9x is bigger than 8x, as long as those things were the same. They expected you to notice that. But it was kind of fun to cube numbers like 11. And I said I would get off topic here for a second. Um, there's something that you'll learn in grade 12, which is called Pascal's triangle. And Pascal's triangle looks like this. The way that you get the next numbers is you find it just by adding the previous two above it. So can you see that it, you can get 6 by adding 3 plus 3? And you can get 4 by adding 3 plus 1. And so the next row is going to be a 1, because it's 1 plus there's nothing here. 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. And you could keep going on this pattern forever. What's neat is these numbers are powers of 11. Right? Ooh, 11 to the power 1. Now that you have this, you'll never have to figure that out another way again. <laughs> of course, you probably know that 11 to the power 1 is 11. It also has 11 to the power 0. And you might remember that anything to the power 0 is 1. But here's 11 squared. Here's 11 cubed. Here's 11 to the 4. And here's kind of 11 to the 5. We got problems because we have tens here. But if we wrote out backwards 1, 5, 0, carry that 1 over to the next one, we'd have 11. Carry that 1 over to the next one, 6, 1. And sure enough, if you try that, that is 11 to the power 5. Anyways, back to our question. Once we get to part C, now we're dealing with fourth roots, square roots, and cube roots. This one you would have to do with your calculator. So pull your calculator out, because it's important to find out how you write in fourth roots, how you write in square roots and cube roots. With our calculators. Three fourth root of eight. Now, if you have the newest operating system, whenever you want to do radicals other than the square root, and the square root is right here above your x squared button, you're going to have to hit the math button. So I'm going to hit three. And on all calculators, it'll work if you hit, well, here, three times. I'll put the times button. If you push the four first for a fourth root, and then go to math, and the fifth one down here has x root, it'll automatically put that number in there. Or it, if it doesn't put it in there and writes a symbol, if you have an older calculator, it'll know that that 4 is in there. Fourth root of 8, push Enter, and you get 5.04. If you don't like using that math button, 
you might remember that from last year that you can change radicals to exponents that are fractions. Do you remember that? So a fourth root is the same as an exponent of one quarter. So another way that you could type this in is that way. 3 times 8 to the power and then 1 divided by 4. That'll give you the exact same answer. So depending on what you like to type into your calculator, you have those two options. So this one's equal to 5.04. 4 square root of 2 is easier to put in because you've got the square root button right there. That's 5.65. And 3 cube root of 5, 3 times. Now if you go to your math button, there is a cube root one. 3 times a cube root of 5. That's 5.12. And once you've changed them to decimals, it is easier to see which one's biggest, next biggest, and so on. So for your homework, I'd like you to do number 5 without your calculator, and number 9 is a calculator one. Just 5 and 9.